Everyone, today is September 26, 2020. This is the Duel Assessment, your podcast for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. My name is Green Ranger, and everything has been announced. Not everything, well, the main thing. We've all been expecting it. Zexal World officially announced at a game show in Japan. And there's a bunch of leaks about the new world, the new characters, but more importantly, we have some new cards. So this episode, we're going to talk about the upcoming XC's Box coming probably on Tuesday called Shining Hope. Talk about all the URs and SRs from that box. And also another release of an upcoming structure deck focusing on one of those archetypes. Um, before we do all that, we're going to finish up with the old world wrap up the KC Cup that was the last tier list update of this meta, the final meta, and Duelist Chronicles 5Ds, as well as Doug's Casual Deck of the Week which is a more competitive Blue Eyes deck. So my week is very uneventful. I've been playing different things, um, different Witchcrafters, Synchro Toolbox, Karakuri. All of that didn't really matter in the end. KC Cup was not much. Uh, I really sat out this one. I mean, I played it, but you know, I played enough for gems every day, but I wasn't competing really, and I didn't really place anywhere. And in terms of ranked duels, I have a pretty good chance of not even making it to King of Games this month. All depends on motivation. It's possible I pick off some of the new people playing XZ's decks uh, at the last day of the month or something, but it's not something I really care about. I hit King of Games all summer with Witchcrafters, so nothing really more to prove if I don't get it, but I do like the uh, 200 gems from King of Games. That's pretty much my motivation of getting it every month, so we'll see where I get this month. So in terms of this week in esports, there are some tournaments that happened in between the KC Cup and now, but I'll just talk about the KC Cup because this meta is pretty much over by Tuesday. So, um, And also I want to say that the decks that they post on the deck lists of the top decks aren't exactly the first ones. It doesn't really coincide with um, what's on Duelong's meta. Like, for example, Duelings Meta has the Megalith deck as number 10, but they have it as number 3 in the um, in the report, in the KC Cup report. So that's, there's a little bit of a discrepancy there. Anyways, first place, this is the new season for 2021's WCS. Zalug, first place, using a, a, three different uh, Shiranui decks, but these are all, you know, big Shiranui decks. Some, two of them are grass versions. But they all run Ghost Meets Girl, a sheer noise story. So this is these are big decks. Um, they also run Sealing Ceremony of Catan. So you banish a fire monster from your graveyard, and then you banish one card in um, your opponent's graveyard. So it has that effect of activating the sheer noise effects as well as uh, being like a transmigration prophecy and it's a continuous trap. So... Uh, these 30-card Grass Shirinui decks apparently took first place. Second place, negative one, played Triamids primarily. Balanced Triamids, um, he used two different 22-card decks. But, you know, I was saying Triamids were a Tier 4 deck, but he took them all the way to number 2, so pretty good for him. And also an Element Saber deck. Third place, Morio, Show of Nightmares, Light Sworn Chaos deck. So a pure Chaos deck here. Um... Levineer, three copies of Levineer, Stega Cyber, um, Light Sworn Engine. That's it, nothing nothing too fancy, 26 cards. And then a Draw Alone Witchcrafter deck that has Lucky Alone. Um, I don't really get the point of this deck. I think it just adds an extra spell to your hand to power up your monsters. But uh, this Witchcrafter deck is not the uh, Light Sworn version. It does run Kiwi Magician Girl as well. That's a little different about it. Fourth place, Nakasaka. Restart Karakuri. Karakuri is pretty much showed up in this uh, KC Cup. Um, not much to say about Karakuri's. Oh, this one's notable. It doesn't run Hey Trune. That's a pretty big deal. Sixth place, Shuhei. Mythic Depths. Um, Crystrons. Sea Stealth Crystrons. Not much to say about it. Psychic Wielder is a core card. Psychic Wielder is pretty important, I think, even for XZs. It will be a factor into some kind of 
like a hybrid, like a toolbox synchro Xyz deck, depending on what you want to do. Gift seven place, show of nightmares, light sworn witchcrafters, and a non light sworn witchcrafters. Uh, not much to note about these decks. Uh, night beams, machine angel rituals seem to be the leading way to go. Act eighth place, cyber style, cyber dragon, still getting it done. Ninth place, Shota used like four different decks. Restart, Kari Curries, uh, Sorcery Conduit, Element Sabers, Invoked, Spell Specialist, um, Buster Blader, Witchcrafter. Okay, there's like a Destruction Swordsman Fusion card in it. And Balance Shiranui with the Ghost Meets Girl. Candy Crusher, 10th place, Master of Rights 2. Megalith. So this is the Megalith deck. This person held first place for a while. This is a very interesting deck. It's 3 Megalith Bether, 3 Haggith, 3 Ophiel, 3 Phaleg, 1 Ak, 3 Cyber Angel Benten, 3 Senju, 1 Megalith Portal, and 1 Megalith Emergence. This is probably the most exciting uh, deck to break the list. And those are the top 10. But if you look at the other decks, uh, a lot of Car Curry decks, a lot of Witchcrafters, and as a result, I think um, Dueling's Meta has updated their tier list. This is pretty much the last uh, tier list to account for XZs because XZs will bring forth a lot of new archetypes. There's going to be a really uh, packed tier 4 uh, zone. So tier 1 solely belongs to Car Curry now. Um, I, I I struggle with this deck. Like, I don't know how to play it. I don't know what it is. I should have hit King of Games already. We'll see if I keep going with Car Curry. So that re- resulted in the demotion of Invoked Neos and Witchcrafter in Tier 2 along with Black Wings, who, who are already there. Element Savers have been bumped down to Tier 3 with Shirnui, and they have cleaned up the list. They've removed Blue Eyes, Dark Magician, and Masked Heroes from Tier 3. They are going to be in the uh, tier four slot with you know any other. I bet a lot of those new XZ's archetypes will be like um, like uh, decks to watch and things like that. So they might be in the same area with those decks. And that doesn't mean you know you could still run those decks for sure if you want to win games and scoop up king of games before the season ends. By all means. Um, th- I think they definitely have an advantage over the Xyz archetypes for now. Because no one knows how to play them or the support's not really there yet. I don't think Xyz will be broken just yet. Like It'll take some time, I think. So, that gets into the event this week. Which is Duelist Chronicles 5D's Fight for the Fortune Cup. This is the second time this event has happened We have two new cards and a new skill that has a little bit of controversy to me. So new card, Psychic Snail. You are Earth Psychic, level 4, 1900, 1200. You can pay 800 life points, select one other face-up Psychic monster you control. That monster can attack twice during each battle phase. This card cannot attack the turn you activate this effect. So it seems like this card gives that monster a permanent ability to attack twice. It's not just one turn. It's a permanent ability. And this is like an aggro psychic thing that's not... hasn't been good in years. Um, Back then, you would use Psychokinesis and probably some other card to cheat out a big psychic monster and then just kill them. This, This goes right into that strategy. You pay life points for a cost. Hopefully, the cost will help you do something... With your dual skill, uh, it used to be No Mortal Can Resist Psychics, uh, but No Mortal Can Resist isn't really played anymore. So, you know, um, this strategy isn't very viable right now, but who knows to say there could be some other Psychic Monster down the line. It could be good. Um, Yeah, not much to say. It's a decent card, I mean, but it's just not good in this time. The other... A uh, new card is an SR called Gadget Arms Water Machine Flip Effect. 200 400 flip effect. Select one Morphtronic spell or trap in your graveyard. Add it to your hand. 
So basically, this is support graveyard um, recycling for any Morphtronic. This archetype was never was never meta at all. We got all those cards from Leo. Pretty much no support from the boxes except for like a power tool dragon or something, but no support at all. They all rely on rolling dice, and even when you're rolling dice, you're playing like Dice It or some other thing with probability that's better than Morphtronics. Morphtronics are just not good, so that's that. And then the new dual skill. This is a controversial one. Black Rose Gale. This is a Kiza skill who's who's one of my favorite characters to use. Can be used the turn you special summon Black Rose Dragon while you control Black Rose Dragon. Destroy all cards on the field. This skill will not activate if you begin the duel with a deck that contains monsters other than plant monsters or Rose Dragon monsters. This skill can only be used once per duel. So I first read this and I didn't think it did anything besides a skill attached to Black Rose Dragon. And that would prevent, as many people have said online, that would prevent effect negation. Venus Chain, Ultimate Providence, Divine Wrath are probably the main cards you could think of that would counter uh, Black Rose Dragon. It could be even be Stardust Dragon, maybe. So um, you can't really counter a dual skill, so you use a dual skill to count for it. But some other people online um, have noted that this lets you use Black Rose Dragon's effect outside of the Synchro Summon. So you could bring it back as a resurrection. Some way to bring it back out of the graveyard. You bring it back and then it could blow up the board a second time. So that's the main benefit of this Black Rose Gale skill. To blow up the board in a special summon situation outside of Synchro Summon. Now, the reason this car- this skill will never be used is because... It requires a deck that cl- contains plant monsters or rose dragon monsters. I can't really name another uh, rose dragon that's being played. There's like a blue rose dragon, but I don't even know what it does. And if you're playing plants, like Aramages are probably like the main plant deck right now, but they don't even have the stars to line up to make a level 7 synchro summon. And more more importantly, they like having life point boosting skills so overall this is a really bad uh dual skill that will probably never see any play at all um yeah kiza will primarily be used um in her way with the um dark verger skill which i like very much um balance and also level augmentation that's what you expect when you see her not not this black rose gale skill so that is the main event for this week. I don't think anything else has happened in terms of um, events or anything like that. Let me see. Because, you know, Zexal World's coming and that's a lot. So, Doug Dimidul is here. I'm going to have him ahead of the content with the Zexal World release. He has Turbo Blue Eyes White Dragon. Uh, I I frankly never really played Blue Eyes, so I would not I wouldn't really know how to build the deck outside of seeing other decks that people have run or anything like that. So uh, here's Doug Damon Duel. This is a good good deck to use if you're trying to scoop that King of Games before uh, Zexo World. A really fast way to do it. They are still pretty good in the meta right now. So here's one last world for Blue Eyes. Maybe um, it's possible they're still good, but here's. Uh, Doug Dim Duel's Blue Eyes White Dragon deck.
Hey there, this is Doug Dimadul with Doug's Casual Deck of the Week. So this week I'm going to try and run with a Blue Eyes uh, Turbo Deck with a little bit of draw power to it. I, I call it a Turbo Deck, but it's not the most consistent, consistent thing in the world, which is why we're putting this under the Casual Deck category. But the deck that I run is with uh, the Dark Side of Dimensions Kaiba Alternative Evolution uh you know, skill, so it basically turns any blue eyes white dragon into a blue eyes uh, alternate dragon. Uh, and that's just really good as, as a way to just pop uh, pop one of your opponent's monsters when needed. Uh, really good skill to have, and then kind of recycling it into the graveyard, uh, you know, by turning it into, uh, you know, synchro monster with one of your, your tuners, and then getting it back to your hand because we're going to try and run our three copies of the White Stone of Ancients if you have them. This is one of the drivers behind the deck. This is what partially makes this deck turbo because we want to utilize cards of consonants. This is the spell card where you discard one dragon type tuner monster with 1,000 or less attack to draw two cards. So we have three copies of the White Stone of Ancients, and then we have two copies of the White Stone of Legend. White Stone of Legend, you know, it's pretty good uh, as well, because whenever it's sent to the graveyard, you could add one Blue Eyes White Dragon from your deck to your hand. And this could come into play, too, if you end up having a Cosmo Brain in your hand, or if you have your Blue Eyes Alternate Dragon, because it needs you to show a Blue Eyes White Dragon from your hand in order to special summon it back onto the field. So the reason why the White Stone of Ancients is such a good card is because the turn that it's sent to the graveyard at the end of the turn, you can special summon one blue eyes monster from your deck. So usually this will be utilized to special summon a dragon spirit of white, which is the level 8 uh, effect blue eyes monster from the structure deck that allows you to banish one of your opponent's spells or traps. Uh, you also... Uh, you're able to also banish the White Stone of Ancients from your graveyard to add a blue eye or add a normal blue eyes monster back to your hand. Really, really good effect. Uh, that way, you can get into some other plays again with your alternative uh, or your alternate evolution. And did I say normal monster? I just meant a blue eyes monster because uh, you could add your alternate dragon back to your hand as well. So. I also like to run one copy of Cosmo Brain to spice things up just because I can, but then I'll also run my three copies of Sage with Eyes of Blue. Now, of course, the main, the effect that it's mostly known for is to discard the card to the graveyard, target one effect monster, send it to the graveyard in order to special summon a Blue Eyes monster. But the reason why this is so good, if you don't happen to open with one of your White Stone of Ancients or your White Stone of Legend and you have a Cards of Consonants in your hand, you can just normal summon your Sage with Eyes of Blue. It allows you to search out a light tuner monster that's level one so you could get your white stone of legend or you could get your white stone of ancients and then use your cards of consonants to um, you know really start drawing into your deck further so that's why i mean you know the sage with eyes of blue definitely a three of in this deck same thing with the white stone of ancients definitely a three of white stone of Le- the white stone of legend is probably going to be a one or two copy i have two copies in my current deck build because I like the little consistency there. Um, now, like I said, Cosmo Brain is great. You could just send one normal monster from your hand to the graveyard to special summon this card, and based on the level of that monster, it gains attack. Uh, so, yeah, just a really good card that has a lot of synergy with the Blue Eyes deck build, so definitely run at least one copy of that if uh, you, you feel spicy enough. And then, for good measure, our three copies of Blue Eyes White Dragon, our 3,000 attack vanilla, that you can use the effect Alternative Evolution to get that Blue Eyes alternate dragon. Uh, then, for good measure, three copies of Regeki Break. It allows us to discard a card like the White Stone of Ancients in order to pop one of your opponent's cards on the field. So overall, just a very powerful trap card to have in the game right now. You could always try and do something similar with the uh, with what, whatever that uh, Karma Cut um, trap card as well, if you want to replace it with that, so you could banish an opponent's monster. Uh, also a good thing to have. Uh, but as far as the extra deck goes, pretty standard for a Blue Eyes build. Two copies of Blue Eyes Spirit Dragon, which is level 9. Two copies of Vermilion Dragon Mech, which is that ultra-rare machine that uh, you banish a, a tuner to pop a card on the field. And 
then your Azure Eyes Silver Dragon, which is a good combo off of your Blue Eyes Spirit Dragon, so that in the next turn you could special summon one of your normal Blue Eyes monsters back out onto the field. Particularly your Dragon Spirit of White would be the ideal play, so at the beginning of your turn you can banish one of your opponent's back row before you start getting into your, your combos and your plays. So, yeah, overall, I mean, this deck is something that you may find on the ladder, something that you may find in a more competitive setting, but um, because it's not the most consistent thing in the world, in my opinion, I don't want to you know, necessarily count it as a uh, you know King of Games quality deck. I would much rather consider this one a more uh, casual deck. So uh, still a lot of fun to play, very effective against uh, PvE and some uh, PvP events as well. So definitely give this one a shot. Uh, I'm always looking for opportunities to use Dark Magician, Red Eyes, and Blue Eyes decks. It's just... The nostalgia factor is is always going to be there for me. So uh, that's it for my casual deck of the week. I will see you next time. Take care. All right, thanks, Doug. You can check out Doug every week on this podcast with Doug's Casual Deck of the Week or his Twitter page at Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck Talk. Okay, so with the upcoming Zexel World, there's a lot of stuff coming on, a whole blitz of information. Um, Some of the characters we are getting are pretty much confirmed, but the rewards are not. What is confirmed are some leaks from the... um, Various websites. I think Duel Links Meta mined it off um, Japanese website. It was all from the release today, but there is a new box coming called Shining Hope, and there's also a structure deck coming. So let's talk about those cards. Um, first, XZ's box. A lot going on here. Also re- releasing a Fiendish Chain here. So a bunch of URs and SRs to go over now. This box is called Shining Hope. Again, with a box, you are, there's only one each, and the SROs are two each, so it's different from the mini box. Again, these impressions are coming from someone who's never played XZs, so I could be completely off on the value of these cards. Let's begin with the URs. First one, of course, is number 39, Utopia, Light Warrior, rank 4, requires two level 4 monsters, 2,500, 2,000. When a monster declares an attack, you can detach one material from this card and negate the attack. If this card is targeted for an attack, while it has no material, destroy this card. So, those who... I've had, you know, polls before about what cards to expect once Xyz hits. And no one was really excited about Utopia at all. It's more of a famous card than good card, I think. Um, a lot of people said it was a meme card, I think. That was the way it was described. Um, so, I'm not expecting it to be much because... People who have actually played XZs in the TCG say it's not very good. There's not much of a ceiling for it. You know, um, it's a protection card. Kind of like having two Karibos at your disposal for a 2500 that costed two monsters. Um, yeah, so not much of a ceiling. It's not very exciting. The, thir- the second ability is kind of negative, though. The third attack will instantly destroy this card. You could swing at it with a zero attack monster and you can destroy it. So it's not a not a good ability there. Um but having this protection can prevent the need for like Karibos or Kiteroids in the deck, for example. So it does serve a purpose in providing protection in a body. This card's not great of course, but it does have upside of being the anime ace monster for the character. And with that there's probably some support in terms of a dual skill or um, other card support. It's just the famous card, you know, like Dark Magician's not good on its own, but Dark Magician has tons of support. So I expect that to be that way for Utopia. And that may allow it to sneak into some play, you know, like it's not a horrible card, but I, I think eventually we'll get more XC's cards that will uh, trump this card, but. Right now, it just seems okay. Now, the next card is really exciting, in my opinion. 
Stellar Knight Delteros, level... Oh, I messed up there. Light Warrior, rank 4. 3 level 4 monsters, 2500, 2100. Same stats as Dark Magician. While this card has Xyz material, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects when you normal or special summon a monster. Once per turn, you can detach one Xyz material from this card, target one card in the field, destroy it. If this is sent from field to graveyard, special summon a Teller Knight monster from your hand or deck. So all these cards that require three monsters to XZ summon, I will prejudice. I will think it's a heavy cost. Um, but this card still seems really, really good. Um, primary primary ability protects against back row that interferes with summoning. So your floodgates, your... Um, you know, all those trap holes, uh, anything like that, all those are prevented. Uh, void trap hole, treacherous, those are all prevented when the monster is normal or special summoned. When you enter the battle phase, you can get hit by those things. So, um, things like Karma Cut, treacherous, um, Venus Chain could still work. So, as long as the monster is not normal or special summoned. So, there, it just prevents that first interference but then later on if your trap's still good you um you get to keep going so i guess floodgate's the main counter to that first ability but then it has a control ability once per turn detach an xz's material target one card in the field and destroy it so you can destroy any card um for three turns so three destructions in this card pretty good a good slow control ability targeting of course um targeting some cards are immune to it. Some cards are immune to effect destruction, but it should be good against most things. And then there, when it's sent to the graveyard, you could special summon a Teller Knight from your hand or deck. So that's the icing on the cake right there. Special summoning a card straight from the deck. A lot going on here. It does cost three materials, but this looks really, really good. Any deck, any card... That specializes in doing three uh, Xyz materials into an Xyz summon should definitely consider uh, this card. Because it requires any three level 4 monsters. It's very generic um, Xyz materials. Next card is Utopic Onomatopoeia, level 4 Light Warrior, 1500-1500. This card is always treated as a Zubaba, Gagaga, -ga -ga, Go Go Go, and Dodo -do card. During your main phase, you can special summon up to one each Zubaba, Gagaga, -ga -ga, Go Go Go, and or Dodo -do monster from your hand in defense. Also, you cannot special summon from the extra deck for the rest of the turn except for XZ's monsters. You can use this effect once per turn. I hope there aren't too many of those cards because I don't like saying them, but I sound like a baby. But this is an anime card, I think, that's compatible with all four of those archetypes that are used by the character. So it's a universal card that works for all of those related archetypes. So it works great. Depending how you build the deck, you can actually cheat out four monsters in a turn. You cheat out two uh, different ones, and then you Xyz those, and then you can make another one. So, um, you know, you could you could summon a bunch of things depending on how your hand looks. The most uh, useful way to use this card, I think, is to make a uh, an Xyz summon with three monsters. So you could get one of each of the Zubaba, Gagaga, Gogogo, -ga, Go -go -go, or Dodo -do cards, and then make a rank 4 XZ summon with 3, like the um, Stellar Knight Delteros. So, useful card in that regard. If those archetypes suck, then this card's not very useful. Next card is Satellar Knight Deneb, level 4 Light Warrior, 1500, 1000. If this card is summoned, you can add a Teller Knight monster from your deck to your hand, except for te Teller Knight Deneb. You can use this effect once per turn. Very basic, boring tutor card for the Teller Knight monster archetype. You're probably going to want something that can special summon, either from the graveyard or the deck or the hand, so you can set up a rank 4 XZ summon. And don't forget, we have all those Constellar Knights too. This includes all of them. Next card is Caius, the Shadow Monarch, level 6, Dark Fiend, 2400, 1000. Of course, 
Those are the Monarch stats. If this is Tribute Summon, target one card on the field, banish it. If you do, inflict 1,000 damage to your opponent if it's a Dark Monster. So, I don't think Scarlet will see any play. It's pretty much worse than Raikou Twilight Sworn, because Raikou Twilight Sworn does not target. This targets and banishes. That one does weak body, but sure, it's a flip effect. But No, it's not a flip effect. It's a normal summon effect. So, it's a better card in every way. Um, this requires that Tribute Summon on a 2400, which at this point isn't very good. This would be used in a Chaos deck. Since it is dark, you can get out like a uh, Plague Spreader or something to Tribute for it. But at that point, you're competing with two other cards. Ryko Twilight Sworn and Chaos Sorcerer. Both cards which seem better than this. Chaos Sorcerer has less attack, but you could use him every single turn, so... That's just superior. This is a Monarch. Um, monarchs aren't really meta. Next card, probably the one of the best in this box, Goblinburg. Level 4 Earth Warrior, for some reason. It should be a Wind Warrior, in my opinion. But 1400 attack, 0 defense. When this card is normal summoned, you can special summon 1 level 4 lower monster from your hand. Also, after that, change this card to defense. So it's like a Goblin flavor of zero defense but very good card this clearly sets up an easy rank 4 xz summon with two monsters using another level 4 in your hand and you're good this can also cheat out a tuner so um as long as that monster is a tuner level 4 or lower you can do it so this could be the core of a toolbox deck i'm deck i'm thinking of run some xz's monsters that are rank 4 as well as different tuners, so you have some synchro options. So, this is a perfect toolbox card. I mean, if it came out of the deck, then it would be OP. So, out of the hand, you use Restart. That's probably good enough. Perfect toolbox card. One of the highlights from this box. Next card is also pretty good. DD Crow, level f 1, Dark Winged Beast, 100-100, quick effect. Discard this card to the graveyard, then target one card in your opponent's graveyard, banish that target. The most apt comparison is the Transmigration Prophecy. This is less, it only hits one card, and it only hits your opponent's card, so you can't recycle your own stuff. Transmigration Prophecy hits two, but that this card is faster. Transmigration Prophecy is a trap card. You can't use it the turn you set it. DD Crow is quick effect. You can just do it. Chain it to their effect. So you could just break up a play right there. Really solid tech card. Um, I think it will be used over Transmigration Prophecy sometimes. Sometimes it won't. It's also a Dark Monster in the Graveyard for Chaos purposes if you need that. Or any you know Dark Monster in the Graveyard purpose. Next card is Forbidden Scripture. Quick play. If a monster battles an opponent's monster, during damage calculation, negate all other card effects on the field until the end of the damage step. Also, damage calculation for this battle uses each monster's original attack and defense. This is interesting. Um, forbidden cards typically see some play. Chalice sees a little bit. Lance sees a lot. This is probably good and it's considered a debuff now that i think about it this is a counter to the next card but this is a debuff against monsters that buff a lot like evil eye um selena or triamids triamids will get no field buff no monster buffs that sphinx is left at 2500 you could easily run it over uh seems like a pretty good side deck card but now that i think about it when that battle happens, you're negating all other card effects. That it will that will include continuous card effects like Phoenix Chain. So maybe you can use that other monster. So that goes to Phoenix Chain. Um, I don't really have to explain what this card does because we've all been hit by this card. This is this and Karma Cut were the two main um, selection box winners uh, of the last year. And now it's finally free to play. So. Everyone can get it, myself included. And Karma Cut being three didn't have the effect that I thought it would. I thought 
there would be a control hell meta. And it's a good thing we're not there yet. So, and Karma Cut hasn't been good enough yet to warrant limit 3 status. So, I think at some point, Phoenix Chain and Karma Cut might hit that limit 3 um, list. Right now, it isn't. So, everyone has access to Phoenix Chain. Pretty good card. You should run with confidence as a trap card that can just replace a lot of other cards. Alright, so let's move on to the SR cards in the box. First one is Gaga Ga, Ga Samurai, level 4. I did it again. Should be a penalty for the number of times I say level. Rank 4, Earth Warrior. Um, requires 2 level 4 monsters, 1900 attack, 1600 defense. Once per turn, detach a material from this card, then target one Gaga Ga, Ga monster you control. You can make a second attack during each battle phase this turn. When another monster you control is targeted for attack while this card is in attack, you can change this card to defense. If you do change the attack target to this card and perform damage calculation. This card frankly doesn't seem great. I don't know the archetype, but it seems like they're doing things with multiple attacks. Cyber Dragons did great with that. They attacked three times, but then they also hit the back row. They had cards like Cybernetic Overflow. They had... Chimera Tech Over Dragon. They hit the back row. Can this archetype hit the back row? Right now, this card looks like a worse version of Chimera Tech Over Dragon. Uh, the cost is about the same. It's probably even easier to do it with the Cyber Dragons. So, you know, right now it doesn't seem too impressive at all. Uh, next card is number 25, Force Focus. Looks like a camcorder. Rank 6, Light Machine. Two level 6 monsters, 2800, 2400. Once per turn, during either player's turn, you can detach an Xyz material from this card. Then target one level 5 or higher effect monster. Your opponent controls negate the effects of that opponent's face of monster until the end of the turn. Doesn't seem very good. This is the first Xyz monster that has big materials. Two level 6 monsters, so that's a big cost. Um, doesn't seem very good. Built-in effect ne negation on level 5 or higher monsters. So you have two charges of that. But there's a lot of cards that do negate uh, monster effects. So, you know, like Memory Loss, Forbidden Chalice, or 2 to name. Um, it seems like getting that 2 level 6s is just a bit much. The attack's 2800, so it doesn't blow you away. I don't know what, to, what else to say about it. I mean, it's having an effect negation is good, but I don't know if it warrants this card. Next card is Mellow Melody, the Brass Djinn. Rank 3, Light Fiend, XZs, 2 level 3 monsters, 1400, 1600. Once per turn, you can detach 1 XZ's material from this card. Then target 1 Jin XZ's monster you control. It can make a second attack during each battle phase this turn. We're getting a bunch of these, I think, from a character. I'm not sure which one. But right now, it seems like Gagaga Ga Samurai with less stats. And that's not very good. Um, yeah, it's about the same. You detach material and you can hit twice. Um, I think this uh, this archetype swarms really good though, so I think they have some potential. But it's a free to play card. I think I think one of the characters is going to give these gin monsters, and this just comes along with it to make it better. But doesn't seem really good right now. And the next one's a XC's archetype from an old archetype. Bujintai Sukuyomi, rank 4 light beast warrior, 2 level 4 light monsters, 1800, 2300. Once per turn, you can detach a material from this card. Send your entire hand to the graveyard, minimum 1, if you do draw 2 cards. When this card you control while face up leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, you can target a level 4 beast warrior Bujin. You can target level 4 beast warrior Bujin monsters in your graveyard up to the number of XC's materials. This card had on the field, special summon those targets. You can only control one of these. So this is not a flashy card. Nothing sexy. Stats are mediocre to bad. But this card gains card advantage and it's really, really good for gaining that card advantage. So you could detach your material, so send the card to the graveyard. Then you send your entire hand to the graveyard and draw two. The most apt thing about this is being a plus one, so you have one card in hand. Send it. Draw two, you're a plus one. 
Now you may be forgetting what Bujins are. They are cards that have quick effects from the graveyard. So you'll be discarding cards to your advantage most of the time or planning to do that. So it requires two level four light monsters. Those Xyz materials could be the Bujin helpers themselves. So that helps there. Um, you populate the graveyard with those effects. And then you can also protect your board from effect destruction when it's destroyed by card effect, like a treacherous trap hole. You could target those level 4 Bujin monsters in your graveyard and special summon them. And then you can make another XZ summon of this guy. So you can have multiple ones of these in your deck. They gain card advantage and they straight up win you games. So, um, and with the Bujin effects, they this card has 1800. You could use the, um, I forgot what the guy's called. But you uh, kind of do like a Ryoku on your opponent. So you could just beat them. Even if this card only has 1800 attack. Uh, Sin something. I forget what it's called. But pretty good card. Not flashy. Next card is Gaga Ga Sister. Level 2. Dark Spellcaster. 200-800. When this is a normal summon. You can add a Gaga Ga Spell or Trap from your deck to your hand. You can target one other Gaga Ga Mox you control. The levels of that monster in this card become their combined levels until the end of this turn. You can use this effect once per turn. So this is a pretty good card too. You can tutor any spell or trap from your deck or hand. And then, if you have another monster on the board, you combine your levels. So you become a big uh, XZ summon. You increase the levels of these monsters. You can make a big XZ summon. You can make that number 25 force focus if you want pretty easy. So the main point of this card despite having a tutor, which is really good, is amplifying your levels to get a big Xyz play. Pretty good card. Next card is Stellar Satellar Knight Altair. Level 4, Light Warrior, 1700, 1300. When this is summoned, you can target one Teller Knight monster in your graveyard except for this one. Special summon in defense. Also, monsters you control cannot attack for the rest of the turn except for Teller Knights. Once per turn. So easy setup for a rank 4 XC summon with a card in your graveyard. Incentivizes the XC summon of a Teller Knight that can attack like um, Stellar Knight Delteros, even though that requires 3. Next card's a repeat uh, card, Aaron Lightsworn Monk. Um, so Aaron, when she attacks a defense, they get bounced back to the deck. In the end of the end phase, send 3, mill 3, 1600. Um, she initially saw play when people were playing around with Light Sworns, but now she doesn't. People who have Aaron don't play her, so, um, you know, Light Sworns are useful. They're useful pieces, um, and she being a light monster is, is beneficial and rank f level 4 plays into some of these XC's cards, but in a Light Sworn setting, you're going to go with the tried and true cards. Lila, uh, Minerva, Raiden... And Lumina. This card's kind of on the outside looking in, but it could be useful once, you know, Synchro Summoning is not the focus. Phosphorage, the Elemental Lord. Um, another reprint card. Never saw any play because it requires exactly five Light Monsters in your graveyard, which is something you're going to have to plan out and be situational about. Pretty bad. Next card is Gaga Ga Bolt, normal spell. If you control a Gaga Ga monster, target one card in the field, destroy it. So this is one for one removal on anything. And that's the only good thing about it is it could remove anything. Back row or spell. I mean back row or monster. Now if this is the only back row card they have, that's not good. Because I was looking at the Gaga Ga Samurai and I was like, can they hit back row? If this is the only thing they have going for them, a normal speed spell, just a one for one. It's not very good. Next card is Stellar Nova Alpha Counter Trap. When a spell, trap, or monster effect is activated, send one face-up Teller Knight monster you control to the graveyard. Negate the activation. If you do, destroy the card, then draw a card. This has potential to be pretty good, but it has a flaw. So, negate effects and destroy are pretty good, especially on monsters, because you just straight up destroy that monster. Those cards typically have a cost in hand. They have required a cost in hand. This requires a face of monster on the field. So 
you're kind of telegraphing your play. It's kind of like Six Sam's dual wield, where you have an attack position Six Sam's, you know that card's set. You have a face up teller knight, you might give away that you have this card in the deck. Now this has a huge advantage in that you could draw a card. So maybe but you give up your monster. You're leaving your board open for an attack. You could get OTK'd right there. So that's a big weakness of this card is giving up your monster to get destroyed. There is payoff though. So this is like a high risk, high reward card. Last SR is Xyz block counter trap. When your opponent activates a monster effect, detach an, detach an Xyz material from the monster you control and negate the activation. If you do, destroy that monster. So Synchro Summons didn't have this ability. This is advantage to any Xyz monster. Negate and destroy an effect monster counter trap at the cost of an Xyz material. So the cost is an Xyz material which we can't properly evaluate. Is it worse than a card in hand is it worse than a card in the graveyard it's probably better than a card in the graveyard but is it worth more than the card in the hand and dual links is not the tcg so whatever the answer is in the tcg is not exactly an answer in dual links so we're gonna have to see how useful that xyz material is can they replenish those Xyz materials. If it is, we have an advantage for Xyz monsters because this can this can straight up blow up um, anything like Alistair, anything like Shirinui, anything that requires that monster effect, you could just blow them up with this card. Um, that's it for the URs and SRs of the box. I'm sure there are plenty of other useful cards, but at the same time, there's probably a lot of trash in this deck. Um, you know, the, being the first Xyz box, there's probably a lot of trash in here. But I think there are plenty of other useful pieces. Bujins definitely look like the winner. Um, if you're trying to fill them out, you should definitely get this box. Uh, Teller Knights play big here too. A lot of other generic Xyz helper cards. Move on to the structure deck that has no name. Talk about the four new cards in this set. There's a lot of trash, uh, not trash, there's a lot of like old cards. Bacon Saver being a reprint here. Memory Loss. Uh, the other cards aren't very good. Warrior Lady of the Wasteland's okay, I guess, but uh, Blustering Winds has some use. So some repeated cards. You're probably getting this for Bacon Saver, but um, let's talk about the new cards. Only four of them. Uh, this is a stupid name. Zuba ba ba ancho ga 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 coat. Level 4 Earth Warrior 1800 100. If you control a Zuba ba or ga 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 monster, except for this one, when this is in your hand, you can special summon this card. You can target one go 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 or do 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 monster in your graveyard, special summon it. Also, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck except for Xyz monsters. So, this is that same combined archetype. You can create a rank 4 Xyz material with 2 or 3 monsters with this card. This is the second piece. You have to have a monster on the board. That's a Zubaba or Gagaga. Ga. Special summon this. Then you get a Gogo Go or Dodo Do in your graveyard. Special summon that. Make your rank 4 Xyz summon. That's it. Really, it's a combo piece. Next card is Gagaga Ga Ga Mancer, level 4, Dark Spellcaster, 100-100. Once per turn, you can target one Gaga Ga monster in your graveyard except for this one. Special summon it. Also, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except for Gaga Ga monsters. If this is detached from an Xyz monster and sent to the graveyard to activate that monster's effect, you can target a face-up Xyz monster you control. It gains 500 attack until the end of the turn. Now, this is the first card that has an ability as an Xyz material being detached. So, this only works for the Gaga Ga part. doesn't work for the whole team. But, it is something. Now, this 500 attack buff isn't very good. This is not, like, the best thing ever. But, it is something. And, every other card we have seen so far does not have an ability whilst being detached as an Xyz material. 
Um, next card is Gaga Ga Academy Emergency Network. Normal spell. If your opponent controls a monster, you can control no monster. Special summon a Gaga Ga monster from your deck. You cannot special summon any other monster except for XZ summon. Uh, during the turn, you activate this card. You can only activate one per turn. So this cheats out monsters from the deck, which is an amazing ability. Any Gaga Ga monster from the deck. And this is a really good turn two card. Your opponent gets advantage on the board. You get a free summon from the deck, and then you could do your own summon. Not that useful going first, though it's dead. But this is not useful going first, but also has some catch-up potential in the late game. So it seems like a core card that you don't have to run a ton of them. But it does help going second to set up an easy XC's summon. Finally, the last one is Gaga Ga Cowboy. Rank 4 Earth Warrior. 2 level 4 monsters. 1500-2400 once per turn. Detach an XC's material from this card. Applies effect. Depending on battle position, if it's attack, this card ca- attacks an opponent's monster this turn, gains a thousand attack, your opponent loses 500 attack during the damage step only. If it's in defense, inflict 800 damage to your opponent. So this reminds me a lot of Preta Plant Chimera Fleecia. This creates 1500 instead of 2000. So that one does a thousand buff, a thousand reduction. So this is 1500, which is close, but not at not the same, but you're talking about a 1500 attacker. It can kill anything with 3000 attack or less. It will suicide at 3000, which lets it hit above its weight quite a bit. Now, there's this burn ability that inflicts 800, but I don't think that's too relevant because of the lava golem nerf. I think that hits this card. So, this probably will be inflict 400 to your opponent. I think it's not official. Um. Obviously, this guy's got two pistols, so he's he's shooting pretty hard. He's got, you know, he's he's inflicting some burn here. But I'm expecting the defense not to be too important. I'm expecting this guy to hit 3,000. So that is it for those four cards from the upcoming structure deck. Upcoming news. We have the new news for the month of October. Um, of course, Zexel is coming on the 29th, early October emission circuit, new UR, not a new UR, this is an old UR, Howling Insect, we already have this card. Early October, Taya reminisces about the future again, a new skill called Up for the Fight. Early October, dual quest, mid-October, turbo, dual Grand Prix, new UR, Dragon Knight, Draco, Equist, and SR, Archfiend, Interceptor, mid-October, Tour Guide, Bingo, New SR card called Antidote Nurse. Mid-October, second time of uh, Clash at Crash Town. An event I really liked. New skill called Shell of a Ghost. Mid-October, new character, probably Axel Brody. Highly anticipated character for some time. New UR card Inferno and SR card Volcanic Slicer. Late October, obtain a new legendary duelist. It probably is Reginald or Shark. And late October Mission Circuit, a new SR card that is unnamed. So that is it for the podcast. Thanks for listening, everyone. Um, check out the podcast anywhere you get your podcast. Just search the Dual Assessment. Find me on Twitter, the Dual Assessment. Um, dual underscore Assessment. My own account, Green Ranger CCG. All right. Uh, we're almost there. We're almost at the Zexel World. Hang in there. It's only a few more days. See you there. <laughs>